I tried hard to do something in my life. I said, I'm going to join the military. I'm going to join the Air Force. So as a junior, I went to the recruiter. I walk, and he looks at me, and he said, my God, man, you look like a great candidate to be, you know, Air Force pararescueman. Okay, Air Force pararescueman. It's a bunch of guys that jump out of airplanes and save down pilots, special operators. Badass. I want to do that. I have no self-esteem. This will give me some self-esteem. He said, but you got to take an ASVAB test. Hmm. Second I heard test people, my ass did this. <laughs> I started stuttering, stammering. I said, hey, you know what? Can I take it tomorrow? Went home, got my best friend, Johnny Nichols. Johnny Nichols was my get out of jail free card. Johnny can read and write. He was pretty smart. I said, Johnny, go with me to the Air Force recruiter, and I want to take this test. I'm going to copy off of you. Roger that. Next day, we go take the test. Johnny sits down. There's like 10 other people. Johnny gets test A. I get test B. I'm trying to, I was trying so hard to copy because it was the same test, but his number 10 was my number 20. Anyway, Johnny went into the Marine Corps and did 22 years. I failed the test. <laughs> so here I am now. Johnny signs up in the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps got him in. I'm trying to get in the Air Force. And I had two more chances to take this test before I was done. The next time I go in thinking maybe, just maybe, I can guess a little better. I go in, take the test. I had to get a 50 on the test to get the job I wanted. I got a 20 the first time, 18 the second time. So I go home and tell my mom, look, I get one more time to take this test. She goes, I'm going to get you a tutor. We can't afford it, but I'm going to afford literally one hour a week. So I had six months before I could take this test again. So how I, so where my work ethic started was right here. People think it's from all the running and all the stuff I do now. It started from me just trying to learn. I had to learn all of high school, all the grade school in six months. And I don't learn like most people. I have to literally buy a whole bunch of spiral notebooks, get the manuals, and literally verbatim write them. And I photographed memory that page that I just wrote down several times. So I can go back through and say, okay, I saw that question on page 71, and that's how I take tests. Went back six months later, scored so high, they thought I cheated. I told the recruiter if I could have cheated, I would have cheated the first damn time because I tried to. <laughs> so I had to go back and take the test again, scored even higher. So now I'm a senior in high school in the late entry program. I'm in the Air Force. And now what they do when you're going for special operations, they send you this packet. It's a warning order. It's warning you that you're going to get your ass kicked when you go to special operations. So it's like a preparation guide. Push-ups, sit-ups, flutter kicks, all that stuff. I'm going through it like a whiz. I'm like, man, I'm going to smoke the hell out of this. Last page was swimming. I'm like, okay, swimming. All right, man, I've never done it before, but that's probably easy. So I go, <laughs> not a big deal, you swim, right? Anybody can do that. So I go get a book, a how-to book on swimming. The first page, literally, you cannot make this shit up. The first page says to float. I'm like, Roger that. I can do this all day long, float. You lay back, I'm reading it, lay back, do this, calm down, relax, boom. I go to the pool, put my book on the gunnel, I'm chilling out. And I see the lifeguard just staring at him like, what the hell is this retarded kid doing over there? <laughs> and I'm like, not to make fun of retarded people, people, but I guess that's what he's looking at me like I was messed up. So I'm looking at it, reading it, in it, going back, making sure I do everything right, looking at the picture. I lay back and I sink to the bottom like a lawn dart and I'm walking on the bottom of the pool like this. <laughs> I get a breath, I bound up, Hold the gun, the lifeguard comes over, like, you okay, what's going on? All freaked out. I'm like, I'm good, but I can't swim. I can't even float. He goes, man, I thought thousands of people how to, how to swim. This is easy. I got this. I'm like, great, man. I got training in like two months. I got to get this, you know, nailed down. So he's holding me up, holding my legs up because, you know, they're heavy. And he goes, man, you got to relax. I relax. I lawn dart to the bottom of the pool. I'm walking again. I come up. He has this look on his face. And he goes, man, you're fucked. <laughs> I said, why? He said, because you are negative buoyant. The reason why there's only 1% of African Americans in special operations 
is not because of anything else but because of the water, okay? The water is hard because why? 70% of African Americans are negative buoyant due to bone density. So you put somebody in the water who can't float, you're bound to drown, okay? You're gonna sink and it's horrible. A lot more effort. Anyway, I took the same exact discipline. I, you know, applied myself with uh, learning. I put into swimming. A few months later, I was swimming my ass off. Got the pair rescue training. 